taxes. And this is the doctrine. This is the doctrine in the Old and New Testament that the older men, you ain't got no business as an old man trying to still be a player. You too old. Don't nobody want to play with you. Get rid of the earring and act like a sober man, a father in the gospel. Let the older man be sober and teach the younger man. This is the doctrine of Jesus Christ. And we've gotten away from so many of these teachings and we still want to build church and we still want to build ministry, but we've never built the people how to live their lives according to the precepts of God. I just need y'all to praise me because I ain't in the message yet. I'm not in the message yet. And this is the sobriety that it took. And that's why uh, children that were raised back in the day that was raised in the church, they always had a certain soberness over their friends in the streets, so much so that they appeared to be old. It wasn't that they were old, but they took so much folly out of us that it made us sober and sound. So we didn't understand why they did so many stupid things because the doctrine kept us sober and sound. When you got older, then you tried to get crazy and find out you had to come right back to that sober teacher. And so as a body of Christ, we got to get back to sound teaching and stop arguing over little things. I don't care about no makeup and all that. Makeup to where we're not wear makeup is not a sin. I'm not going to tell you that. I had a situation happen to me as I was pastoring and newly pastoring. Again, these are things that I've been taught. And so, you know, and I don't do it just because it's the standard that God gave me. But in the ministry, and I had this one elderly woman, I may have shared this before in our ministry, that she wasn't a very attractive woman, but she was very kind and very sweet. She was an RN in the uh, cancer ward, in the cancer ward of the hospital. And one day she said something to me that I had never looked at in this perspective. And she said, you, you, you know, Pastor, she said, a lot of women, she said, I work in the cancer ward. She said, I have to deal with women going through chemotherapy and they lose their hair and they may have had their breasts removed. And she said, and they're going through a very ugly stage in their life. And she said, and sometimes they just need to wear something just to feel pretty. Sometimes sisters might go through a divorce or rejection or God knows that their husband had an affair on them. And these sort of things can sometimes, I'm talking to the sisters for a quick moment, you might not feel as pretty as you used to. You're not 25 no more, you're 52. And so the beauty that you're using, so you might want to do a little something, something to help yourself look a little cute, cute. You, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, that's not the problem. The problem is when you wear it for the purpose of seduction. Now that's another spirit. No, your eyelashes don't belong up here. We know that, right? We know that. And so that's the reason why he had to come around and said, be of modest apparel and that that becometh holiness. These are doctrines. These are things that we were taught so that we would have the balance. And so where we are, I truly believe, within the body of Christ is everybody is seeking for the balance. I really believe that I you know we, we, we know we don't want to be so poor that we can't do the work of God but we don't make us so rich that I can't make it to church y'all understand what I'm saying so give me the balance give me the balance and so uh, even on tonight and, and, and I'm gonna pray and you know as the Lord will lead but you know, the, the man of God is, is, is he so said in so many different times in different ways uh, God has absolutely divinely connected us and, and, and to me it's like time will still tell uh, what it is and, and the impact I'm broken uh, because of it it's like of all the people in all the earth that you know he would honestly and genuinely connect me with I really wish it was somebody less popular I, I'm just being honest and, and a little less famous because it's just intimidating and people think it's some other motive. Y'all know what I'm saying. Y'all know what I'm saying. But it's truly a brother and a sister love in the body of Christ. And as he said, our families are just genuinely connected. Our sisters and brothers together, our children are genuinely connected. And with that, uh, usually whatever assignment he has me panting on is usually the same agenda that God has him. And so the word of God today in Isaiah 58 and 12, what did he say? Say. Yes, and she needs just a little mic on her volume on her mic. Isaiah 58, yes. And they that shall be of thee. Is that 58? Yes. Are you sure? And 12. 58. Isaiah. Okay. You sure? 
Okay, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. And they that shall be of thee, yes, come on. Shall build the old waste places. Thou shall raise up the foundations of many generations. So we're at a stage now where, and I, I just feel like testifying, I just, I'm always so at home here. It's like, you know, if we continue, sanity is what? Do the same thing over and over and expect different results. And as we are watching uh, the condition of the church, this is real. Yeah, divorces shouldn't be on the rise in the church. Um, the devastations and things that we're seeing, it's just, it just shouldn't be, but we can't continue to have church like it really ain't happening because nobody want to stop to say, y'all know what, maybe we doing it wrong. And maybe we need to do some things differently. Maybe we need to put on brakes and get on our face and ask the Lord, how do you want this house to be built? Accept the Lord. Build the house. All of our labor. Good God Almighty. All of our conferences. All of our mega ministries will be in vain if it wasn't built according to the hands of God. So he said, and they, read it and slow down just a little bit, yes. And they that. And they that. Shall be of thee. Shall be of thee. Shall build the old waste places. Shall build the old waste places, yes. Thou shalt raise up the foundation. And i got to choose somebody to raise up the foundation, yes. Of many generations. Of many generations. Because we got a whole generation that really don't have a clue. They don't have a clue to real holiness and wholesomeness. I, I think I've shared this in our youth conference before uh, when my babies were babies and our daughter, who's 16 now, but uh, she was about 12 or however old she was at the time. And so, you know, uh, we heating up the bottle, you put it in the microwave, heat the bottle, you heat the microwave. So the microwave was broke. And so I said, Jazzy, go, you know, go heat up the bottle. And so, and so I was waiting on her, waiting. I came and I said, why aren't you heating up the bottle? She was just standing there. She said, how? Because all she knew was the microwave. I said, girl, if you don't take no pot, that pot, and put some hot water in it, and put that in it, put that bottle. And so it is in this generation. We're having nations of people that are coming straight from the street. They've never been taught how to give up this world right. They've never been taught to go home and clean up your closet from everything that don't look like, walk like, talk like God, and then get in prayer and seek his face until you get really filled with the Holy Ghost. They're not really being taught how to seek the Lord. And the Lord said to me, he said, now Tammy, if you don't teach him, I'm talking about me because I've been taught some stuff. He said, now, here's what's not fair. When you get in trouble, when you mess up, yeah, you'll shut, and I've done it. You'll shut the whole church down. Don't nobody come up here for days because I need to seek the Lord. I need to fast and cry. I have cried in my own church so bad till you saw the snot puddle, petals in the floor, piles where I done cried and snotted. And so now I feel better because I knew how to get to God. It's not fair to you if I never taught you that you got to humble yourself and cry out to God and stay there till you get a breakthrough. Yep. I ain't talking about your few little crocodile tears. I'm 
talking about until you know the things I used to do. I ain't never going to do no more. I have been delivered. I need y'all to praise him. There is a thing called delivered. That I will never go back to that thing again. And so he said, who going to build this foundation? Instead of us being so uh, amused at, at 500 people coming to the altar at one time and we've never tarried over, we never prayed over, we never worked on them. We took your name and told you we'll call you and what committee you need to work on. The only committee you need to be on is called prayer. Prayer at 6 a.m., prayer at 12 noon, prayer back at 6 and getting filled with the Holy Ghost. And then we'll see. So it's so not fair because these people and we as saints of God and the poor sinner coming in off the street is coming to the house of God because I've tried everything else and they told me to try Jesus. So now that I'm here, I'm looking to Jesus and I'm looking to this church to train me how to go home and stop beating up my wife and how to be a better father and be a better mother. I need y'all to help me. I need you to help me. He said, build it. Build it, because the reality of it is, this is real life. Yeah, real life. I'm, I'm grateful for the history of, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I have to know that so I can know what kind of God and how powerful my God is. But you better help me understand in 2010 how the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob go help get this lust out of me. You better help me understand how it's going to destroy yokes in me right now in 2010. I need y'all to help me to praise him. I need you to help build it, build it, build the old waste places. So he's saying, we got to build now. And we have to build as though we see the signs that Jesus is soon to come. We got to build like the sun is going down. And I don't know when he's going to come. A man pastor said to me one time, he said, Tam, you know, the end of the world is not only the second coming of Jesus Christ. He said, it's the day you die. That was the end of the world for you. And so while we can so arrogantly think we have time, honey, I, it's a scary day right now. A whole lot of folk leaving that I never thought would leave because God is saying, I'm a twinkling of the eye, whether it's the rapture or the day I come for your life. Be ready. Come on and let's build. Let's build. Oh, I'm going somewhere with it. God, help me with the time. What did he say? Yes. Thou shalt raise up the foundations. Thou shalt raise it up. Raise it up. Raise it up. Raise up the level. Raise it up. Raise it up because we're too low. Raise it up. Put the demand on us to walk righteously. Put the demand on us to walk holy. He said, raise it up. Raise it up. Raise it up. Don't let anything go no more. Raise it up. Raise it up. He said, raise up the foundation. Yes, come on. Of many generations. Of many generations, yes. And thou shalt be called. And thou shalt be called. The repairer of the he breach. He said, I'll call you the repairer of the breach. <laughs> 